All right, so a quick note before we get started, although we have had our camper for quite some time, we don't have a ton of RV experience. I took trips with my family growing up as a kid, but in terms of actually operating, driving, and planning everything, we're total newbies. There will be a part two available of this, which we'll link above. We hope that you get a laugh out of that. Now, our current camper is a 2002 Wildwood, and we've really enjoyed our time in it, but we've quickly realized that it's probably a little too big for just the two of us to go cross country in. Also, it's the maximum weight my F-150 can tow, and I really didn't want to take that 10,000 miles cross country with us and do that to my truck. So that was out pretty quickly. Our other options were staying in hotels, buying a smaller camper to take with us, doing a van conversion, renting a van, or buying a brand new van. If you couldn't tell, we really wanted a van. So hotels and sleeping in my car were ruled out pretty quickly after doing the math on how much it would cost to stay in hotels every night and also eating out three times a day. In a two month span, we projected to spend about 12 to 18,000 just on hotels. We eliminated buying another camper pretty quickly as well. We realized that we'd be moving around very quickly and we didn't like the idea of having to unhook a trailer every time we got to a campground and having to do everything that's involved with that. So that got taken off the list pretty quick. And it just didn't seem practical when there were other options for us. So at this point, we were really looking at three options regarding a van either buy one, convert one, or rent one. So renting one was next off the chopping block because the cost was right up there with staying in hotels. And that was with us projecting the same food budget too. We were actually pretty surprised at how expensive it would have costed us to rent out a van for two months. Obviously there are many benefits with renting a van, including less responsibility, no down payment, and it would have been a great way for us to figure out if we actually enjoyed the van before we went ahead and bought one. So now we've either narrowed it down to either buying a van or converting one ourselves. And honestly, I think these would be the two best options for anyone looking to do the type of trip that we're doing two month cross country to hit as many national parks as we possibly could. We're seriously considering doing a van conversion for a few reasons. One, it would have been a smaller down payment for the van itself. Two, it had a lower financing cost. And three, it had been a little while since our last home renovation, so we were kind of itching for a project. And four, we'd be able to customize this to exactly what we needed for our trip. Five, we know how gratifying it can be when you take on a renovation project like this. We thought it'd be super neat to have a one-of-a-kind van for our trip. And six, it was just a better option than everything else that we had discussed. Now, of course, we also considered some of the downsides of doing a van conversion. First, this would be very time consuming. We're leaving for our trip this week and looking back, we're definitely glad we did not end up doing this. We've both been so busy getting ready for this trip and getting our businesses in order to take this trip that I don't even know where we would have found the time to do this. We honestly still have so much to do and we're leaving in like four days. Second, three days, who's counting? So second, while we do have experience doing renovations like this with our properties, a van we just weren't completely comfortable doing, not because we were afraid of doing the work, but if something were to go wrong, a pipe burst or something just stopped working, not having tools and not knowing what to do or how to fix something. We'd be on the hook for fixing that. Buying a van, having a warranty seemed so much better for us. And we've already used that warranty once when we had a couple of issues and we bought it and brought it back to the shop. That was a pretty heavy weighing factor for us to actually buy a van versus the conversion was having that peace of mind where if something goes wrong, we have a warranty to cover that. Third, yes, we'd be saving money on the down payment itself, but after thinking about doing all of the renovations and having to pay for that pretty much up front, that probably comes out to being pretty close to a down payment for an already converted van. So also just to know on this sheet here, this section is just what we projected to have to pay just in the two months that we're traveling. This doesn't include the down payment for the van. So after taking all of this into consideration, we finally bit the bullet and bought our van. We've saved up, we've been working very hard, we've been living below our means to make this happen, and we're very comfortable and happy with our purchase. So we did put 20% down on our van, and then we financed the rest of the cost. Now what was interesting to us is that they actually did a 20 year note, so 20 year financing for the van, which made our monthly cost lower than we actually expected it to be. And we've already had to bring it back to the dealer to fix a few things with our warranty. And it didn't cost us a dime. And in case you watched our van tour video, yes, we got the hot water heating and no, it was not a manufacturing error, it was us. Jayco offers a two year or 24,000 mile warranty, which is important to us because as we're taking it cross country for 10,000 miles, we know it'll be taking a beating. As much as we did want to make the conversion and do the renovations ourselves, we realized that we've paid our dues renovating our properties and it was nice for us to walk into a brand new already converted van. Plus, we were able to make some conversions of our own and stay tuned to look out for our van mods video coming soon. Now, looking at this spreadsheet, I think we're gonna be much closer to the lower side of this. We really wanted to prepare for the worst. Again, like we mentioned at first, we are totally new at this. Unfortunately, the cost of fuel and gas have gone up quite a bit since we did this analysis, 
I believe at the time we did this, gas was under $2 a gallon. Right now, I was writing this, it's right around four. And I remember writing at the time, $4 per gallon to be super conservative, never thinking it would ever get that high, but here we are. Now we've already done our van tour video, which we'll link above. We've loved our time in the van so far, and we know we made the right choice. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't a few things that we've realized we probably would have changed it. So keep an eye out for our van review that we'll put out at some point. And one thing I want to add real quick before we release the van review is, if you do buy this van, we did find a couple of cables and wires started coming loose underneath. I just zip tied it up to prevent it from dragging and catching on something. But just an FYI, once you first start driving it, maybe check underneath every once in a while to make sure nothing comes loose. I hope this video helped you if you were in a similar position we were in about a year ago, not sure what to do or what type of van to buy. And comment below if there's anything we missed or you wanna have addressed. Also, and most importantly, we still have not come up with a name for our van yet and we're open to suggestions. So please leave a comment and give us a hand with that. So if you found value in this video, of course, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, turn on the notification bell, and we'll see you on the path.